I feel a little barfy. She's a woman of few words right now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we all have our least favorite movements in the gym and when they show up and where they show up in the workout can have a big impact on the rest of the session. So I threw some wall balls in. You guys haven't noticed, Megan has got a long way to go to the wall ball target. <laughs> so it just, I mean, you know, and movements are challenging both physically and mentally. So if you, if you believe it's a weakness, then the physical aspects of it will compound. This was my story with deadlifting for like six years of my life. Every time deadlift showed up, it was just like, I was already mentally defeated. So um, not to say that she was defeated, but it definitely pushed her. And then, so the lower body gets really challenged. The brain has stress. And then you go into the rest of your training. Everything's gonna feel that much harder. But today was a, was full on. We're, test, we're testing out some perform. So we're, we're splitting tracks, getting some perform workout elements with some pump track elements. So, you know, the, the hot start that we did was not designed. <laughs> Got the music kicking in. Um, she was like, I'm tired of hearing you. I'm gonna just turn the music on. Uh, we have some perform elements that were not designed to be with the pump elements. So we got like a lot of lower body pre-fatigue, hot start before we went into weight training. And then we did heavy hip thrusts, RDLs and split squats. So that combination of lower body after wall balls was just, it was a lot. Um, I was feeling it for sure. So. If you're looking for a great way to get started with a hot start and then get right into some weight training that's effective, here's how we coupled it together. The hot start was simple. Every three minutes, we did a circuit. And then if it took you two minutes to finish, that means you get a full minute to rest before you start the next set. I did double unders, bike calories, wall balls, and toes to bar. You can change up those movements as you feel needed. Megan skipped the jump rope. She went bike, wall ball, and then hanging knee tucks. You got some different options, but the same time frame. We both finished around two minutes per set. That gave us a full minute to recover. Five rounds of that. After 15 minutes, we were hot and sweaty and ready to jump in to our core lifts for the day, which were the hip thrust, which we did six reps every minute on the minute for eight sets. We were trying to control it down for two seconds per rep and then squeeze hard at the top. Make sure you complete that rep at the top. After eight minutes, we switched to a new exercise, the rear foot elevated RDL. This is a single leg hinging exercise. We went for eight reps per leg, alternating right, left, right, left every other minute. Every leg got four sets and that completed. Hot start right into some great lifting for hypertrophy. Give that a shot, hot start, right into your lifts. It's an efficient way to get a, a full body workout in about 30 minutes. Structural balance or strength balance. This is something that we do in functional bodybuilding with our strength training. And the design of these supersets or these elements is to make sure that our joints, front to back, side to side, maintain great strength, range of motion, and overall health. We gotta use these joints in order to keep the range and to keep them strong. Now, we wanna be strong front to back, side to side, so that we don't develop imbalances, which can lead to dysfunction later on and leave you with some performance left on the table. So for our strength balance today, we worked on rear foot elevated split squats, also known as Bulgarian split squats, and prone hamstring curls. Now, the prone hamstring curl machine is a great tool, but not everyone has it. Check out these variations like the banded prone hamstring curl or the banded seated hamstring curl, which we have. 
For the Bulgarian split squat, we were shooting for 10 to 12 reps per leg. For the hamstring curl, it was closer to 15 reps. But if you're using a band, I would stretch it out to 20. How can you put this into an actual strength balance superset? We used an EMOM format, every minute on the minute. The first minute, we used our right leg Bulgarian split squat. The second minute, we did left leg Bulgarian split squat. And the third minute, we did prone hamstring curls. Repeat that for 12 minutes. If you're short on time, only do nine minutes, but you're gonna get three to four sets on every movement. Hope that helps. Keep hitting your structural balance. Make sure that you don't hit strength plateaus and that you stay safe and healthy for the long run. Wrap up training, we often use something that resembles conditioning. Conditioning comes in many forms. One of our favorite forms at functional bodybuilding is called fatigued abdominals. This is where we combine cardio, breathing, with direct abdominal core work. Today, we actually tossed in a bike, the GHD sit-up, and then a lower body single leg exercise of your choice. My choices were a Cossack squat with the goblet hold for my kettlebell. My wife went with a curtsy lunge. This is a little bit more glute dominant. She held dumbbells at her side. How did the workout look like from a structure standpoint? We started on the bike, then we moved to the GHD and finally to the Cossack squat. One, two, three. We went round and round and round and the repetitions went like this. 15 reps on the first round, 12 reps on the next round, nine reps on the third round, six reps on the fourth round. After that, we climbed back up the repetition ladder. Round number five was nine reps. Round number six was 12 reps. Seventh and final round was 15 reps again. That was approximately 80 reps of everything. It took me 12 minutes. My wife got done in about 10 minutes. She's a little quicker than me. How do you guys go and how do you fare on this workout? Let me know get your fatigued abdominals in and finish strong.